Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Admin Orange, and welcome to the build video for the 31 Ford Model A. We have right here the White Swan Farm Supply Truck. The name changed on that from the original hint that it was coming out to when it actually came out. But anyway, this is my third in color Ford model build. The first one was the 37 Ford truck, which I really liked. It wasn't too difficult. The second was the 32 uh, coupe, which was a lot more challenging than I expected. But what are we going to make of this 31 Ford? Well, let's go over to the table, open up the packaging, see what's inside, and get started on this build. Let us open up the 1931 Ford Model A. Pretty much another truck model. I think it looks really cool. The one that changed names, the White Swan, it is now called. Inside we have one metal sheet, two metal sheets, nicely separated so they don't scratch each other. Let me just scratch that up for you. Yeah, whatever. I'll put that off to the side and we're going to find the sheet to start us off, the instruction sheet, we've got two. I'm going to grab the one that says Metal Earth. We're going to open this up and kind of go over the instructions briefly. In case this is a first build for anyone out there just getting into Metal Earth and have decided to start it with these cool old Ford models. We open the instructions up to page one. Start of it, we've got the Metal Earth logo and a line drawing of the model in one of the sheets. We have a 360 view, either type in this website or scan this QR code with like a phone or tablet. It'll take you to where you can see a already built model that you can spin around on the screen for reference sake and that can come in very handy sometimes. Below that we have a sample part with a notation on insertion tabs, insertion holes, and fold lines. Basically insertion tabs ultimately go into an insertion hole somewhere and fold or twist, that's how you connect parts together. Fold lines are pre-scored areas where things are bent, shaped, and folded. Over here we have the legends. We have the E and the NE in a little bubble. E is talking, when you whatever that's pointing at, it's the engraved side or section or colored side or section. NE is the opposite. It's the non-engraved or non-colored side or section of a part. Because oftentimes, you know, you've got a symmetric part and it's saying to fold this way. Well, which am I folding it towards the engraved colored side or away from this helps you figure that out attention point if you see that it's usually trying to get your attention on how something aligns most of the times that i see it is trying to make sure that you align a tab a certain way or a feature a certain way and if you don't align that feature the right way the rest of the assembly is not going to go right blue circle and green triangle they've been around forever the blue circle means to insert one of these insertion tabs into an insertion slot Fold it over 90 degrees for a clean look. Green triangle, insert the tab in the slot, twist it. The twisted tabs are more secure, but not as clean looking. There's situations where one is more favorable over the other. They tell you what to do. I don't always follow that. and I don't always think that they're doing the best, but if you're new to this, go with what they say at first. Unless, of course, I in the in, during the build, I say otherwise. Beside that, there are some tools. We'll talk about tools here in just a moment. Below, we have the two metal sheets, or an outline of the two metal sheets. I'm going to grab one. Looks like I have grabbed B. I love that they now label them A and B. They didn't used to do that. It helps you find the parts a little faster. This is a line drawing of this sheet. All the parts are numbered around it. There are numbers pointing at the different parts. You'll notice most of the parts are not colored in, but some of them are. For instance, the purple ones here, kind of a late purple lilac color maybe. I'm not always good with colors. The parts that are colored in the same color are duplicate parts. Actually, this purpley lilac color here is pointed at over here 25. It's labeled as parts 25 over here. All four of these are part 25, most likely part of the wheel. We're dealing with a car. There's, there are symmetric parts, similar parts. Rather than having 25 labeled four different times, they just label one and color, the, color them all. It makes it a lot easier to find. It really does. I appreciate that they do that. So all these light green are the same part. This purple, this purple, this one, and this one. You get the gist, hopefully. Moving to page two, we start the assembly flow chart, starting, of course, with part one. It is on sheet A. Looks like the bottom of the vehicle. There's the part. Move over here. We've got a kind of a sub-assembly. We've got part two, which is on sheet A. Here's the part. 
here they're they're indicating the fold the sides down. You kind of you can see that the edges are colored red. That's an indication that that part has been shaped, moved, folded, something like that. The blue lines indicate that it's folded down at a right angle. That's how it's shaped. There it is shaped. It plugs in right here somewhere with green triangle, twisted tabs. We have part B or part three, which is on sheet B. Same difference. The pieces are folded down and then it is plugged in right here with twisted tabs and you end up with this over here. And that's the gist of the instructions. We're gonna follow through the arrows, doing the assemblies and sub-assemblies and just shaping, curving. This part is curved. This part's partially bent. Just building the parts, going through and adding things together, shaping as indicated, like down here we have the whole front piece here is red. It's indicating that all this is folded and curved in shape. You get to the bottom of page two, of course, flip over to page three, follow it through, page four, follow it through, and when you're done with four, you grab the next sheet, open it up, find five, six, seven, and eight, continue on until you're done, and you'll be finished with the model. Let's take a moment to talk about some tools, and I've got what I consider the basic set in front of me, starting with a pair of flush clippers or side clippers. These are primarily used to cut the parts out of the sheets. You can get the parts out by folding and twisting, though you run the risk of breaking something. You didn't mean to break a good pointed set of side cutters or flush cutters, like this Play-Doh set that I've got here, work really great for quickly getting the parts out so you can get on with your build. I have, of course, a small selection of tweezers. We've got a fairly basic set. This actually came with one of the older Iconics sets, and I've been using it for quite a while. But a good sturdy flat end tweezers can come in really handy for doing a great number of things. I also have a few pieces from a precision set of tweezers. If you need some precision tweezers, just search precision tweezers online. You'll be able to find something out there. These two are very similar. They have a very fine point though. I did grind the tip of these down to help me grab tabs. And then this is just kind of a flat set for getting in tight spaces. And then we have couple of pieces left over from the Fascinations three-piece set. I broke the clippers long ago, so I had to replace them, but we have long nose pliers and flat nose pliers. Really handy. These are handy for bending long parts, and these are handy for bending short sections right here. But this is the basic set. We'll do a great amount of things with just this set right here. You'll be able to build a lot of different models and do a lot of different things. When it comes to shaping curved, domed, or rounded kind of parts, I like to have some sort of tool to mold things around. And I've designed some 3D printable tools for use in that. You might see me using in the video. I've got some cone shaping tools. I have a little block here for rounding stuff. I have larger cone shape combo tools, and even a little tool for shaping dome shapes. However, you can just look around the house and find parts, dowel rods, pencils, beads, thing, paint brushes, pens, things like that can also be used to shape stuff as well. As for the 3D printed parts, I do sometimes print up extras and sell them on Etsy. Or you can just get the STL files if you have a 3D printer yourself and print these out. I'll try to include links to both the STL files and the Etsy store in the description down below. We talked a little bit about tools and I've got my basic set here at the ready. I've got the metal sheets and the instructions. We've gone over the instructions ever so briefly. I'm gonna get organized and let's start putting this thing together. I nearly forgot the finger cons. I'm not sure how much this model will take fingerprints, but I didn't want to find out.
I used the closest to the right size drill bit I could find for part 9, but it was just a touch too big, and I had to give the circle an extra pinch after shaping it with the drill bit. You may have noticed, but I didn't fully shape the part 6 before attaching it. I only bent it down the tabs. I do that so I have room to work the part into place first, secure it, then finish shaping it. I most likely would have bent or squashed the part while trying to secure it if I fully shaped it first. And now the fun of shaping the fenders. I had several people ask how I did it in past models, so I think it's best to just show you rather than try to explain. I especially wanted to work that seam between the two sections into a smooth curve, or at least as smooth as I could. I learned not to let it stay into a sharp angle like I did with the 32 coupe build.
The shaping of the first fender went fairly well, but the second time didn't go quite as smooth.
These side pieces to the seat just barely fit. It's as if the slots were a little too far apart for the tabs, or a little too close together. I was having trouble getting the side fender on straight, so I paused to check out the 360 view. I had to sort of slide the footboard under the half round bit off the side of the body. I nearly forgot to restart the camera and turned it on a bit late for the one side, but I did catch the other. I had to unplug one of the slots that was covered in a bit of paint.
Next up was the steering wheel column. The column, part 22, needed to be folded into a long, thin rectangle shape. To do this, I bent the center bend a little bit, less than 90 degrees, and then bent the outer two seams at a full 90 degrees, then pinched the two outer corners together and squeezed it into the rectangular shape. Most of the time, this trick works rather, rather well. There were a lot of flaps to bend up on the frame.
Like before with part 9, the drill bit was just about the right size. I needed to give the part a little extra squeeze after removing it from the drill bit that I used to shape it. Then the tabs lined up perfectly with their slots. Of course, for wheels, you need to do that three more times. The outer half of the wheel has all of these little bits that fold in a little bit. It takes some time to fold them all down. Don't fold them very far. Honestly, I think I folded them a bit too much because as I went to put the outer half to the inner half, there was some resistance as if the flaps were pressing against the inner piece. Of course, as before, you will need to make four of these outer wheel sections. I started to catch on that the folded in flaps might be folded too much so on the last wheel I flattened them out a little bit and it did fit better.
that brings us to the end of part one of the 31 Ford Model A build video. We've gotten a good ways in. So far, everything is going pretty pretty smoothly, a lot better than it did with the 32. And right off the bat, we started working on those fenders, which I find a bit ironic, maybe, that one of my biggest issues with 32 is I wish I'd have spent more time working on the fenders. And this one, we almost start out with the fenders, and I get a lot of time working with them. So far, much better. But we're about halfway through part two. We're going to pick up where we left off here and finish out this build. So I will see you there. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep on keeping on.